If you're a predator and you want to take down a large animal, in the vast majority of cases, you have to be large yourself. Of course, there are some exceptions to this rule as there are some predators that specialize in taking down animals that are much larger than themselves. But in most cases, you need power and weight on your side. Bizarrely, there are some strange instances where tiny animals can take down true giants, and they can do this either indirectly or directly. Some invasive species can cause the downfall of animals that are much larger than themselves, and some tiny animals can infect larger animals and eventually cause their demise. Without further ado, we can take a look at our first giant animal, and that animal is the moose. The moose is the only species in its genus, and it's the tallest and second largest animal in North America. It's the largest and heaviest species of deer, and it can be found over large areas of the Northern Hemisphere. In the wild, these animals are mostly browsers, and they can eat up to 35 kilos of food per day. They are known for being great swimmers and will happily spend time in the water, and sometimes they will use the water to get away from predators. As some moose can weigh over 700 kilograms and stand at 2.1 meters at the shoulder, they are only really hunted by the top predators in their ecosystem. Wolves, bears and cougars are their main predators, but sometimes they are preyed upon by wolverines. These predators can have a big effect on their numbers, and in the past few decades their numbers have declined dramatically in temperate North America. Their numbers have not only declined due to predation and hunting, but they have also declined due to parasitic infection. One tiny brain worm is causing massive problems in North America, and this worm is only around 6 centimeters long. It can be found in the bodies of quite a few species of deer in North America, but it causes the most problems in moose. With some species of deer such as the white-tailed deer, this worm can pass through the body causing minimal damage. The moose, on the other hand, does not have the defences to deal with this parasite, and these worms can bore tunnels into the brains of the moose. It's believed that moose can get these parasites by eating tiny gastropods, or by coming into contact with white-tailed deer. When a moose becomes infected, it can be a slow and sad death, and they can also be a danger to other animals. When some moose are infected, they can become fearless, and they tend to show a lack of coordination and poor vision. Some have been witnessed walking in circles, but eventually they will die. These parasites have been blamed for the deaths of many deer across the US and Canada, and it really is a sad way for such a magnificent creature to go. It really is strange that such a tiny worm can cause the demise of such a large animal, and hopefully a solution can be found in the future. The next giant creature we will be taking a look at is the Nile crocodile, and this reptile is one of the most dangerous predators in the world. This crocodilian is native to freshwater habitats in Africa, but it can sometimes be found in brackish environments. Even though the Nile crocodile is a true giant with a maximum length of around 6.1 meters, it is by no means the largest crocodilian in the world. That title goes to the saltwater crocodile, but the Nile crocodile kills far more people than the saltwater crocodile. It's almost impossible to get exact numbers on how many people are killed by Nile crocodiles in Africa, but estimates range from around 200 to 500 fatalities per year. Around 63% of Nile crocodile attacks are fatal, and only around 50% of saltwater crocodile attacks are fatal. There have been some famous man-eaters over the years, but strangely these animals can be negatively affected by an animal that's much smaller than themselves. The Australian red claw crayfish is obviously not native to Africa, but they were introduced into South Africa with a few other species in the 1970s. These crayfish were imported to be used in aquaculture, but of course some of these crayfish escaped into the wild. They were first sighted in the wild in 2002, and since then they have been spreading. They are relatively large for a crayfish and can reach up to 20 centimeters long, and this means that they can have a major impact on the ecosystem. At first, you may think it's impossible for this crayfish to cause the demise of the Nile crocodile, but they do so indirectly. In South Africa, in the dry season, water can be very hard to come by. The Nile crocodiles need this water to survive, and each year there seems to be less of it. Researchers believe that these crayfish may be to blame, and this is mainly due down to their burrowing behaviour. These crayfish will burrow into the banks of rivers and lakes, and this means that the lake and riverbanks become weak. 
This affects their ability to hold water and this negatively affects the Nile crocodile. It means that every dry season is becoming drier and drier and there are less water sources for the Nile crocodiles to thrive. In recent years, water holes have been shown to dry up at an astonishing rate and these crustaceans are having a massive negative effect on one of the largest and most dangerous predators in the world. For our final giant creature, we will be heading over to the Atlantic Ocean as we will be taking a look at the Atlantic Goliath Garupa. The Goliath Garupa is a saltwater fish in the Garupa family and it's one of the largest bony fish in the world. It can be found over large areas of the western Atlantic and it tends to inhabit rocky reefs and wrecks. These fish are known for having a big personality and they also have rather huge mouths. They are of course suction feeders and they'll feed on pretty much anything that they can fit into their mouths. They are mostly slow moving but they are very curious and they won't usually shy away from divers. In some cases they will stalk and follow divers but there have only been a few unconfirmed deaths attributed to this fish. In reality it's far more dangerous to get this fish on the end of a fishing line as they're more than capable of dragging you down into the depths. Despite this, Goliath grouper fishing is extremely popular and there are thousands of videos on YouTube of people hauling in these giants. Very few predators apart from humans prey on fully grown goliath groupers, but when they are younger they can be taken out by other predatory fish. Some of these predatory fish are having a massive negative effect on their numbers, and these fish are invasive. The red lionfish and the common lionfish can be found in the western Atlantic, and these fish are an invasive species. These fish are native to the Indo-Pacific, but they found their way to the western Atlantic through the pet trade. As these fish are predators, they have a massive effect on the ecosystem and they have very few predators. Over the years, they have multiplied at an astonishing rate and they have had an effect on the goliath grouper. Not only do the lionfish feed on the fish that the goliath groupers eat, but they can also feed on young goliath groupers. Lionfish are mostly found along reefs and in the shallows, and this is where goliath groupers start their lives. They start off their lives in mangrove forests, and then eventually they make their way to reefs. This is where they can be predated on by the lionfish, or they can be affected by the number of fish that the lionfish eats. The presence of the lionfish can mean that there's less food to go around, and this can cause the young goliath groupers to suffer. It really is strange that such a small fish can affect such a large fish and hopefully their numbers can be controlled in the future. If you know of any other animals that could have made it into this video then let me know down in the comments below. But for now thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, goodbye.